and welcome to Once More with Feeling, Orphaned Land, Unsung Prophets and Dead Messiahs. So yes, new album from Israeli band Orphaned Land. And before we get into it, no, we're not doing that discussion. Just no. But but I always want to talk about whether or not Israelis make good ice cream. I mean, I've never had this chance before in my life. And this is the time. This is the time to do it. But yeah, I'm nipping the conversation in the bud right now. This is not the... Oh, come on. I want to be the next Logan Paul. I want to be the next PewDiePie. Well, actually, right now, you really could be the next PewDiePie. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, so yes, this is an Israeli band. Um, I don't entirely know how you found them, but this was a, this was a rather unexpected um, band for you to throw at me because the last two you've thrown have been... Um, shall we say different and not what at all what I was looking forward to looking for or forward to or what have you. So when you threw this one at me, you're like, hey, check out this one. I think it's a winner, which immediately made me go, Great, it's another fucking god awful music. The musical band that you just came up with and went, Yes, yes, Billy, I will torture you this this horrible, horrible band. So you you told me the name of it, I looked him up and well, I can tell you right now, this is like like nothing else you've sent me so far. It's, well, it's different for me. I mean, I have vaguely tangentially heard of Orphan Land in the past, and it was literally just going through the wiki list, uh, sort of like, uh, what album shall we review? Uh, Orphan Land, let's go with that. Uh, okay, it's folk metal, it's a few other things as well. Great, let's go with that. We'll review that. And yeah, listening through it, it's sort of like, okay, this is not what I was expecting at all. Yeah, I agree. Because when I first went into this, I was like, okay, he's claiming it's metal. That's that's cute. Because the last couple of times you claimed you found metal, you instead found some of the weirdest shit I've ever heard. Um, or it was just, you know, you know, the grunge depression music that kind of involved both of us committing ritual suicide, i.e. the last album you gave me. So when you told me that this was going to be kind of an interesting metal band, I was like, okay, fine. All right, fine. So I loaded up that first song and it starts out, yeah, quite folksy. It almost sounds, I'm trying to think of the name of the band. Uh, I think it's like Apocrypha or something like that where, um... They have like uh, two double basses and they and are like cellos. Apocalyptica. Yeah, Apocalyptica. That's it. Yes. It sounds almost like them mixed with Trans-Siberian Orchestra mixed with a lot more instruments. Like I know they only have, what was it, five guys or seven guys in the band? Yeah, it's five guys. But it feels like there's like 50 points. Yeah. They really go overboard in a number of uh, musical tracks that they threw into this. And whenever you hear those words, you're always expecting it to just be this just collection of just noise, just loud banging noise, because no one ever really seems to, you know, create more or less like an actual melody. In this, on the other hand, it ends up sounding more like an actual orchestra production rather than just a typical band. So you actually get a good flow with, you know, the, the musician when he sings. Sorry, I should, probably should just say the singer. That makes more sense. When the singer actually includes his voice into the tracks, it's not against the music. It, it flows perfectly with it. Um, you've got dueling, uh, dueling instruments that kind of go back and forth against each other, but in a good way. It it sounds and flows far better, far better, better than you'd expect. It's just it's an incredibly good way for this album to flow and start, which is weird. Because most albums, they either have that, like, really hardcore, like, I'm a metal band, and you're going to get just bend on over and grease up that hole. Or it opens up with this just, like, ridiculously goofy, you know, like, soft introduction, so you get it completely thrown off course. This one skates somewhere in the middle between those two perfectly, where it lets you know that there's a bit of rough stuff coming, but at the same time, there's also good melody and good, just good everything. I liked the way this album starts far more than i've liked an album starting in a while because it, it opens up perfectly mm. so yeah I, I like how this i like how this album started it it made me it made me you know kind of excited i was at about three quarters masked if you know what i'm talking about <laughs> oh god um that's just going to be a running theme for any time we do a show together it's just going to be you saying very disgusting things to make me go oh god i don't know what you're talking about 
I got aroused. Um, yeah, when I threw this on, as I say, I've never listened to Orphan Land before, so I wasn't sure what to expect. And for me, it was sort of like, okay, I'm quite grooving with this. Um, what was really cool is how they integrated all the different sort of Middle Eastern instrumentation and Israeli and all that sort of thing. Now, for clarification, I was not informed that they were Israeli until about two-thirds of the way through the album, give or take, I think is when you finally let me know that they were Israeli. For a while, I actually thought they were Eastern European. <laughs> because uh, I got I got a far more of like uh, far more of that kind of a vibe initially, not realizing where the kind of my country of origin was, because I, I didn't look these guys up at all. I figured if I'm gonna do this, I'm just gonna dive in with no no knowledge. So when I I was like, oh yeah, this this is interesting. It was only when there was like st like sitars started popping up. I was like, that's Mediterranean and Middle Eastern. That's not a traditional Eastern European. What the fuck am I listening to? Uh, well, actually, looking through the instrumentation, it's even more unusual than now. I. I will outline, I don't actually know what these instruments are. It's just got the words on the page. So, like, you've got one of the members who plays guitars, piano, bouzouki. Don't know what that is. I think that's kind of like a kazoo and a bazooka at the same time. <laughs> he just he just hums into it quite loudly and missiles fire, which explains a lot, actually. Uh oh, we're we're steering dangerously in the wrong direction. Quick, move on to the next instrument. Next instrument. Uh, next instrument is the saz. Wait, the saz? S A Z. Is that kind of like a so it's a, so it's a saxophone that died. <laughs> it just gave up. It was like I could have been a saxophone, but I'm not. Okay, got it. Move on. Um, I'm gonna have to look up a saz now. Right now, actually, I gotta see what these things look like. Saz. It's a. Uh, oh, that's actually a string instrument. Yeah. Oh, that's probably. Oh, I know which one that is. Okay. Yeah. Uh, never mind. I actually. Uh, that might be what I was confusing for. Um. Yeah. Okay. Never mind. Yeah. And you've got the oud or oud. Yes. Which is another string instrument. Yes. And let's see what the bauzauki or I don't know how it be pronounced. How do you spell it? B o u z o u k i. There we go. And for those of you who don't speak proper apparent English, Z is the letter for Q. Yeah, I, just, I figured I would help people out. Oh, it's a Greek. It's a Greek guitar. Because why not add even more unusual choices? <laughs> it is a necked bowl lute. For those of you out there who desperately would like to know what a plucked string instrument is. I'll include images in the video so people can actually see what the fuck we're on about. Yeah, that might actually might help. Because, I mean, I, I have to admit... The traditional guitar that we over here in the West know of, you know, whether it's uh, acoustic guitar or electric guitar, what have you, it doesn't look nearly as cool as a lot of the instruments that the rest of the world has pulled off. Like the oud? Yeah. The oud is an amazing guitar. The only way I can describe it is think of like an acoustic guitar that has erectile dysfunction. That's the best way I can describe it. <laughs> That is absolutely the best way to describe this instrument. Am I wrong? Am I wrong? Well, it's kind of like a lute, but it's sort of like someone took the lute and went, nah. <laughs> it's a bit lame on the end. It's a bit lame. Yeah. Now it's got broken neck. Right. Let's see how that affects the sound. <laughs> that's that's what I said. It's it's essentially got erectile dysfunction. Then you got the the bag the bag lama, uh, which technically is the saz. Uh, that one, although it's also sometimes known as the kira. My question is, which one is the one where it, it's not a plucked instrument because they use something with a, with a bow? And I'm trying to figure out which one that would be. Um. Oh God. That's unless it was a violin, because it's. I swear there was either a violin or something like that in the group. But I'm gonna guess it's one of these that they just used with a bow. It sounds hauntingly beautiful in fact i heard two of them going at going against each other on some of the tracks yeah i know we're really off topic folks i'm sorry it's more along the lines of just dissecting the way that these guys did the music is just incredible yeah uh, it, it's just the musical talent as far as for the just the instruments and the way it was all done it has to be commended it's just incredible all joking aside yeah i mean it's because of how expertly everything is crafted and how perfectly all the songs sort of 
how they very carefully crafted all the sounds together. I honestly don't know whether I'd say I have a favourite song on the album. Oh, that's tough. That's genuinely tough. Yeah. Like, honestly, The Cave is probably my favourite overall. That one and Chains Fall to Gravity. Those were two very, very good ones. Yeah. If I want something that's just kind of unusual in the background, Yadidi is perfect because it's in Yiddish and I love musical tracks like that that I cannot understand. So I can just kind of just sit back and just listen. That's really, that's another one that's really nice. Where things kind of start to drop off for me is from a pretty much about track 10 to track 13, My Brother's Keeper on Forward. Just not that not that interested at that point um especially the last one the manifests i i understand why it's there i understand what it is i just don't care because by that point the music is gone and now we're just getting into political stuff and and then then the awkward conversation starts to rear its ugly head again so yeah i mean that that's the thing i will admit we're kind of very carefully skirting around a lot of stuff with this album because israel is a conversation that neither of us are really equipped that's the best phrase we, word we can ever use is we're not properly equipped to handle this conversation in a rational meaningful manner so anything we say will likely be taken either out of context or just be completely insensitive so it's best just to nod smile and go this is better for someone else to have this conversation in a far more useful manner we'll just be two boneheaded idiots in two different countries spouting about crap that we don't completely understand and that's not a good thing so mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, the only thing I'm going to touch upon on this is where this band is concerned. They're all about unity and peace between the various faiths. So they just want everyone to go grab a nice blanket, snuggle up under the blanket and just get to know each other far better. That that was that was not the way I intended that to sound. <laughs> but the point the point is still there, you know, if they just got a really big blanket and just cuddled underneath it. Anyway, we're drawing a line under that side of things because, yeah. You know it must be bad. Because of the things we've discussed in previous episodes, this must be a bad topic. <laughs> yeah. So, um, what were your complaints with the, about this album? Not involving the state of Israel. I honestly don't have any complaints well fine well i have a couple of minor complaints but they're nitpicks all right well bring on your nitpicks bring out your nitpicks um one of the nitpicks is that a couple of the songs do kind of end a bit abruptly okay and and when i say abruptly i mean they do just suddenly stop And it's sort of, it's one of those, you're a passenger in the car and the driver will just hit the brakes and you're sort of like, I wasn't expecting that. Well, come on. Why weren't you expecting that? It sounds like so much fun. Chalking along at a nice 45 miles an hour or for you British and the rest of the world, you know, what is that? 12 kilometers per hour, whatever the hell the conversion is. And suddenly you're going down to zero miles per hour or in your case, 15 kilometers per hour. I think that's what you guys measure now. I, I don't remember. No, we are in miles per hour. Oh. We actually use real money. I'm very confused. And okay, that's that's just weird too. But we'll, we'll talk about your weird desire for imperialism again later. Ugh. Oh God! Why the hell did I bring it up that way? But yeah, I I I kind of get what you're saying. It doesn't seem like it, it stops that abruptly most of the time. Every once in a while, they will kind of just die, but it doesn't seem to drop that roughly to me. Um. Well, I'm I'm mainly talking in the instance of the manifest. Okay, but that needed to end far faster than it does for a variety of reasons. Because it is it is basically just talking about the fact that war is bad, people so people should not stop killing each other, blah, 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 blah. So I understand why it's there. It's just, I don't really want that kind of political activism in my metal. But then again, this isn't my metal, this is somebody else's metal, so that's perfectly why it's okay. Because I'm not going to go like, oh my god, you cannot have any civil discourse, how dare you? I completely understand why it's there. I just don't get any pleasure out of it. So thus my brain's going, just get back to the beginning of the album. It's only one skip away. Beep. And then you're back at the beginning. Well, the key problem there, and this isn't a problem I have, but it is a problem, if that makes sense, is that they start to use 1984 quotes. And that's one of those, okay, you don't need to quote 1984. It's a bit old hat at this stage. Everything has quoted 1984. 
But come on, don't you want to start talking about Newspeak and the really weird shit that happened in that book? At least they're not talking about the rats going in the guy's stomach. That's that's at least a, a pleasurable thing. Or I guess, no, it was his face, wasn't it? Yeah. They were going to put the rats into his face. That's right. It's been a little while since I've read the book, did the play, and also watched the movie. One of the versions of the movie, at least. Uh. Yeah, I, I did that. And that was one of my favorite books in high school, was that particular book. So much so that when we were in drama class, I actually did the play. <laughs> And then, on top of that, I then watched the movie when I was fresh out of high school. I was like, wow, this is the most amazing thing ever. And then I realized, oh, shit, that's happening. Yeah. <laughs> so then I stopped liking it because I, I figured if I just ignored it, nothing would happen. So that's where I'm at right now. Gloriously forgetting that it's happening right now. La, 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 la. I mean, we, we frequently have a running joke of... 1984 was not a guidebook. Yeah, well, I mean, you guys really have that thing going on. You know, the whole everywhere there's a camera, everywhere there's facial recognition, everywhere it's going on, they're constantly watching everything you do. Like, we Americans pretend like that's happening, and it is to some degree, but the level that you guys are being monitored, especially in cities like London, yeah, are way beyond what we're having over here, which is weird like okay the the united states has a very weird view of the rest of the world and this is something i will discuss in short detail the united states views the rest of the world more or less like somebody else's backyard you don't really realize how big it is when you realize their backyard doesn't have a fence and it just goes on for pretty much the rest of the world when your backyard is kind of small in comparison we we look at our nation that is gigantic because you know we stretch Four time zones on the mainland, plus another couple of time zones when you look at some of the outlying territories. We're big, but we're not the rest of the world. So sometimes we kind of tend to forget just how important what's going on in the rest of the world is. Uh, we kind of have like these waves of just a mixture of xenophobia and isolationism that just hits us without warning. It just does. You know, like I've, I've been victim of it plenty of times looking at situations going, oh, that's not happening down the street from me. It's no big deal. It even happens about our own country. Mm. Like, look what's happening um, Puerto Rico over in what's happening in Puerto Rico, which is the United States territory. They are United States citizens. And the vast majority of the country just doesn't give a shit. They just take a look at what's happening there and they're like, well, that's, that's not us. When it is, it is us. It is our own country. It is our own people. We're completely ignoring that fact. Regardless of whether or not you like the president or not, it doesn't matter. We are ignoring our own. That's worse in some ways than us ignoring, say, what's happening over in, like, the Ukraine or what's happening in some of the Middle Eastern countries where there are persecutions and people are killing each other for religious reasons. Doesn't really matter. Mm. That's all bad. I am never going to say it's not. But my point here is, if we can't even look after our own, yeah. how, how do you think we feel about the outside of our groups? And that's just wrong. That's just very, very wrong. And it's just, it's so easy to get distracted because of how, mm. I don't know if, I don't know if the internet and... Uh, how easy information is to access has helped or hindered in this respect because I think back in say 1950 when you had to rely on your radio and your paper and occasionally in television if you had access to a TV for your news cycle when you would read a story about what's happening in say Pakistan or what's happening in say the Ukraine or what's happening in Japan or wherever the case may be I think that actually hit harder than the fact that we get bombarded by 50 news stories an hour on our phone yeah I don't think this massive influx of information helps us realize that people really desperately need help regardless of where it happens to be and i think we've become very desensitized to that fact which is something i don't like to say because i don't like saying that the internet has desensitized us because i don't think that's necessarily it it's the way that we consume the internet that may or may not have actually desensitized us yeah i mean you can essentially can actually link this back to the album um you can see that sort of perspective of how consumption of information and attitudes being desensitized is kind of epitomized in the song left behind because that is sort of the discussion of the refugees uh, various conflicts and how we've essentially just you've got the whole nimby attitude with regards to refugees yes 
that's that's a global issue now everyone's acting like the refugees are hyper dangerous and they're going to bring with them either disease or apparently like you know small little children are carrying explosives and assault rifles i don't really understand how that supposedly works but mm. apparently that's the that's the feeling so i appreciate when people try to point out that refugees are never going to be the well i shouldn't say never but at the present refugees are not the problem mm. it's not, not that issue whatsoever it's just people's attitudes towards others that are causing a lot of this ah. you know without a doubt none of the terrorist attacks that have happened on u.s soil have happened from refugees mm. refugees have not been behind any of the terror attacks on u.s soil there was one terrorist action is what we'll call it because it was not an attack there was one terrorist action where they were funneling money to a terror organization back in the middle east but that's it that was not on u.s soil no one died as a result although kellyanne conway our you know basically news troll mm -mm. she did try to talk about the bowling green massacre but there was no one who died because because once again, there was no attack. And that's part of the problem is they attribute violence to the wrong people. I'm not going to say that it's not people who came over here legally who did not perform the actions because there have been some cases where that's true. Mm. But typically it's considered homegrown terrorism. And it's a complete misnomer. It's kind of like trying to claim that eating a steak will give you heart disease. Because it's technically not true, unless all you're eating is steak. Well, at which point, of course, you're going to die. But mm. typically what's being attributed to heart disease more commonly than not is sugar. High volumes of sugar is what leads to heart disease. Eating a steak is fine. And that's kind of what's happening here with, say, the views towards like refugees and stuff like that is we've attributed a very bad thing to the wrong group. And that's wrong. It's kind of like if you were to walk into a place and go, we don't understand how to do math. The obvious problem is... Too many people are learning how to play an instrument and that's stopping them from learning how to do math. That's kind of the argument. It makes no sense when you look at it from any kind of logical viewpoint. And it's just stupid. It's just really stupid. So I want to do like closing thoughts on the, on the album before we go too deep into like... This, this particular review is nothing but just political discourse. <laughs> well, at least with the political discourse, we've been very careful. At least I hope so. Like, I'm sure in post you're going to be like, Oh God! What are you thinking? You said the word that you weren't supposed to say. What, dolphins? No, how dare you talk about dolphins and tuna? No. Sorry, I'm sorry about your eardrums. <laughs> But yeah, um, I mean, I can still link this all back in. Um, it's quite interesting. That's the thing, because I did take notes both on the musical side and the message that was being conveyed. Sort of in contrast with the left behind thing, you've got We Do Not Resist, which is kind of a satire on how even those who they are very submissive to the regime that's been put in place whether it's in the middle east or even in america or hell over here you know the one place that does not have an issue with refugees mm -hmm. the one place in our entire world that doesn't have that problem mm -hmm. antarctica <laughs> i'm pretty sure the penguins there are like fuck it bring them <laughs> it's cool we got fish come on over <laughs> you can't build an igloo because that's that's the other side of the world that's that's the northern hemisphere but you know down here you can just chill with those penguins and and the occasional narwhal actually the narwhal would be the north hemisphere as well either way they, they all just chill <laughs> sorry i felt like we had to have something kind of you know uplifting considering oh uh, um i i think we best this should be a shorter episode just because otherwise this is going to go go a place none of us want it to go uh, yeah uh, if you do have thoughts and opinions on the whole israel situation go over to twitter you can post them all there y yeah not on my twitter <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I technically have a Twitter and the same thing here. If you feel like tweeting me something about Israel, I will politely just ignore it. No offense. Um, I do have my viewpoints on it, but there are personal viewpoints and I have no interest in sharing them with the world because I'm not Donald Trump. Yeah. It's best not to share it. Just nod, smile, and walk away. Regardless how noble it may be, it's best just to nod, smile, and walk away. <laughs> yeah. I know that regardless of what I say, whether I'm on one side or the other or neither, someone is going to get angry so yeah it's just absolutely not worth sharing at this point because no matter what you say it'll be taken out of context yeah so even if you'd said something as blanket as like 
I'm for everyone. We should all be together. I love you all. Will somehow be turned into, I am the next Hitler. So no matter how you phrase it, just nod, smile, and go, okay. <laughs> that's just that's just all that's all you can do you can just nod smile and go okay because yeah you if you're pro against whatever it doesn't matter you're gonna end up being strung up by your toenails so yeah i mean there will even be people who will be pissed at me if i say that i'm on neither side so of course because now you're just a cuck now you refuse to have any kind of like emotional feelings so yeah we're still gonna be assholes for not saying what we feel but i can live with that yeah i can accept that i i would rather be an asshole for not saying anything than be strung up for voicing my opinion Exactly. It's the it's the smarter thing to do. Yeah. So, basically, I believe both of us have given this a thumbs up. What would your score on this album be? Um, I'm going towards a 4, possibly a 4.5 out of 5. See, I'm I'm leaning more towards like 4.5 to 5. Yeah. Just because I can't stop playing this album in my car. Yeah. Like as I said, once it hits about track 9, I'll listen through 9, which is left behind. Mm. Once it hits my brother's keeper, at that point, I just skip it back to the beginning. But the fact that I just cannot stop listening to it because it works perfectly when I'm doing deliveries or if I'm just driving around town or what have you, it's a great album. It's not melodramatic while you're listening to it, which is surprising considering the subject material. Instead, it's just good. It's just enjoyable. It's really enjoyable to listen to. This will stay in my albums I'm, I'm going to continue listening to for quite some time. So because of that, yeah, I'm going to give this a five. I genuinely loved this album. I may not like the last couple tracks, but that's not going to take away from the fact that I genuinely love this album and will continue to listen to this for quite some time, probably a couple years at least. And I'll probably be looking up the rest of their albums to see whether or not they're any good or not. Because <laughs> no idea if they are. Yeah, same. Um, I'm actually thinking over my score. Because I don't feel like knocking away points just because i understand why the tracks are there it's not like a it's not like some other albums where we've listened to and it's like why the fuck was this included i understand why they're there because this is obviously meant to be a, a bit of political piece as well yeah because it's a political piece and I, I don't enjoy anything about the political piece i'm not going to take anything away from it because that part is obviously not meant for me because it's not meant for me i'm not going to weigh that as part of my review yeah because it's just not for me so to knock points off because that particular part of the performance was not intended for me seems rude so i refuse i'm going to just review the part of the album that was obviously meant for someone like myself which is tracks one through nine and it was definitely practically perfect so that's that's why i got my five star yeah i'm thinking about it actually yeah i'm gonna give it a five star so there you have it we're both apparently siding with it with israel <laughs> shit no no <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah uh, if you are a fan of political music, then this will definitely be up your street. If you like sort of fusion music where they take elements of both traditional sounds and metal, then this will definitely be up your street. If you're a fan of Orphaned Land, then... Cool. I mean, I've not listened to any of their other stuff, so I don't know how this compares to their previous albums, but I can't see any reason why you wouldn't like this if you are a fan of the band. Okay, I have to ask, how the hell do you pronounce this? Orphan Land, the never-ending way of O-R, Wari or So it's supposed to be o r -E -R? Or how the fuck would you pronounce that? Um... Uh, can you type it out? <laughs> sure. I'm sending the album to you. This is this is the most ridiculous thing I've ever seen for a title. I mean, I it, genuinely, it may not actually be that title. I may have to actually go quickly review this because I figure I just quickly just pull up another album of theirs just to kind of look at it real quick while we're talking. But um, or warrior? Yeah, I don't I don't understand that. Like, okay, another one of theirs was uh, Mabul. The story of the three sons of seven. I am so confused by that title. But, oh, cool. It actually has a picture of the five of them. Cool, there's a chick. I did not. I, I, I thought there was a female voice, but I wasn't sure if they just brought a girl in or not. But apparently that's actually a member of the band. Cool. Very nice. Um, from 2004 to 2012, they had Shlomit Levy doing female backing vocals. Well, there, was, there were female backing vocals in this one, too. Did they just bring somebody in for that? I know that's completely off topic at this point, but... Um, I think it's one of those, they've got session players and things like that. Okay. Um, yeah, because I don't see anybody in the present group. I mean, I could be wrong. It's kind of hard to tell sometimes with names that you don't recognize. Mm. I don't believe anybody there is female in the present band. I could be quite wrong because Uri could be 
female, but I doubt it. Lori Zelkin. That's typically a male name, but... Yeah. Chen, of course, is uh, Dong in French. Idan, Matan. Yeah, I don't think any of those are female now, so they must have just just found a very nice lady who sang along with them a couple times. Eh, I wouldn't like to say for certain. I mean... I'm just going off of just assumptions, which of course is the most dangerous thing you can do, but I'm going to go off of assumptions. Eh, I mean, anyone who knows anything more about the band, feel free to comment. Yeah, let us know we're complete dipshits, because we of course are. Yeah. Just two idiots from two different countries. (laughs) By the way, my name is Pierce, apparently, because, um... I'm standing in for Pierce probably permanently, maybe temporarily. We're not entirely sure, but apparently that's who I am now, is I'm now Pierce forever. Pierce Mark II? Well, I can actually say what the next review will be. Ooh. Funnily enough, you mentioning Pierce, he will be returning. I'm not sure what the position will be, whether it'll be a case of you taking over as the majority reviewer and him becoming the guest, or it being alternating between you two. I mean, either way works for me. Um, Death to Pierce. Death to Pierce. Um, Just kidding, mate. I'm totally friends with you, I swear. <laughs> Um, The next review will be of the new Scandal album, which is called Honey. Don't have any idea who they are? That's fine. They're a, I think, J-pop band? Uh, I basically... Oh, God, no, that's all him. That's all him. I'm good. (laughs) I basically... It was basically a case of he said that um, Bandmaid and Scandal were both releasing albums at the same time, and it's sort of like, well... I've already done three rock or metal albums on the trot, so let's... Oh, it's an all-female band, too. Oh, Lord. (laughs) Yeah. Oh, no. Yeah, that... Oh, that would be hell for me, because J-pop is already, like, just grating your fingers across the chalkboard. And, okay, no offense to the ladies out there, I really do enjoy some female, all-female bands. I want to make that very clear. However, J-pop needs to have both genders singing it, for me or else it's just either sounds like screaming banshees or men without testicles and it just needs both you need to have both sides of the spectrum to make it even remotely palatable and oh dear god but yeah it's probably going to be hell for me as well because there's very few j-pop bands that i can even tolerate so wow they've got a They've got a schedule. Good God. Yeah. I'm just looking at their... Uh, actually, I guess those are technically old. Never mind. I, I apologize. I'm, but they've, it looks like they've been together since, what is this, 2008? 2006. Okay. That's not bad. I'm over here just, you know, spying on... I'm spying on Pierce. So, you know, no, no big deal. I watch him while he showers. So anyways. Anyway, that'll be the next review. That's it for this episode. It's goodbye from me. It's goodbye from John Cash, otherwise known as Nicholas Steele. <laughs> <laughs>